Tubation, Mini Pit TV, aka Me TV, aka David Stern is the devil, aka the refs need to be replaced, and that's what we're gonna talk about today because I'm tired of watching basketball and having to see dumb shit like this. From Kentucky, welcome to DC, number two, John You see, Bill, once he gets over his shyness, he's going to be something else, isn't he? He's so reserved. We enjoy the public address announcing from new and out. Oh, my God. Now, look. Before I even get started, all right, let me apologize for my comments right now because I know somebody's going to be offended in this bitch. But you know what? That's the gayest shit I've ever seen in my life. you got to be kidding me. Am I watching basketball or dancing with the stars? I don't know. Look, I understand that there's been a lot of clowns as of late, all right, in different basketball topics and videos I've been reading and stuff. And I keep hearing, oh, well, they pet the, the, the players are just showing that, you know, they can have fun and it's not always about business and money and it's that third. Bullshit. Bullshit. Now I'll tell you why I'm gonna tell you I'm gonna break it down to you so good. Because the fact is the competitiveness of this game, that's the fun part. I watch basketball to see competition. I don't watch basketball to see some clown fucking dance. You gotta be kidding me. Alright? If you can't understand that part, then guess what? You don't need to be watching sports. You don't need to be watching sports. Because I put it like this. If you even thought, if you even thought about even trying that type of shit outside on the court, people will fucking laugh at you. They laugh at you. Matter of fact, you might get some people trying to push the shot you for it. You gotta be kidding me. This does not happen on an everyday basis. This is the difference between people who play basketball outside and fucking divas. Entertainment. Because that's what basketball's resorted itself to. And I understand that people want to see it's going to be fun or whatever, but the fact is, this is started way before the NBA. This started in college. Now, before anyone thinks that I'm just hating on John Walsh because that little gay-ass dance, no. All right? Because he did this shit in, in Kentucky when he did it. All right? And I thought it was gay then. All right? But the fact is, the fact is, the media pushes these kids so fast, all right, in this type of system. Oh, well, they need to show responsibility. And it's just talking about in college. All right? And we all know what happened when the media goes too far. We all saw the video, you know, I'm a man, I'm 40, this type of stuff. We saw this because the media pushes, they don't let the kids be kids in college, which they should. That's when they should be allowed to. I still think it's gay, but that's when the kids should be allowed to do it. But when you get to the NBA or any type of profession in sports, that has to stop. All right? And if you keep saying, oh, well, you're just trying to take the fun out. No. If you look at the NBA, if you look at the NBA from times past, you never saw, you would have never saw Michael Jordan or Charles Barkley or, or like, you wouldn't have saw those guys, Clyde Drexler match, you wouldn't have saw those guys dancing and shit and doing choreography, you gotta be, you know what, let's just get into that right now, let's show all the stupid shit we've seen in the past couple of years. Pre-game ritual, which has received national acclaim, a little family photo op coming up, which is Red Jordy Belay's piece in the night. <laughs> Here we go. Oh, these guys. Tonight's family photo as LeBron lines them up. Oh, I think they, oh, they're a rock band tonight. <laughs> the rock band. I don't. Weaker foes the past three games. The lowly Wiz hoping to not be the fourth in a row. Meanwhile, Shaq uh, doing. Everybody thinks that I'm hating on LeBron James or the Cleveland Cavaliers for those previous couple of years. No, they were the first videos that came up to prove my point, so I snatched them up so I can show you. But that is the problem: immaturity, lack of fundamentals, lack of basics. It's it's the same thing. And the NBA pushes this. They're pushing entertainment over competition. Why? Because David Stern has turned this into a fucking circus. That's what he's done. All right. That's exactly what he's done. Every time you have these larger than life stars that they've built that don't have that much, that aren't that really that good, all right? They're really not. You, just because you're 6'9", and you can dunk a ball doesn't mean you deserve to be on a poster or have your own shoe. It's stupid, all right? But the fact is, the fact is, this is what the NBA thrives for because they want you to keep watching. They think if they have highlights and big dunks and, and, and buzzer beaters and bad ref calls, we're going to get into that, and bad ref calls, that it would keep drama into it and that you would keep watching. But that's not what it's about, for me at least. I don't know how you guys were taught, but the way I was taught, when you step on that court, whether it's the hardwood, whether it's the concrete, or wherever you play on, 
All right, some people even play on dirt or even on the street with the little with the crate on the on the uh, was it on the telephone pole. But the fact is, anywhere you step in, your game face is on your focus. All right, it's business. All right, every once in a while you'll see a guy go over and shake a hand or introduce himself before the game. But other than that, that shit waits till after. All right, because it's business. These guys these days, they have it so made and they're so fucking comfortable. If they don't get their way, they get pissed off and they throw these little fits. And they're so fucking soft because they do these flops and they bump into refs and all. I mean, bump into refs and coaches and all this other shit. You never saw this before. All right, there's a lack of respect now because of how much they're getting paid. All right, and, and you know what? Let's just look at some of the bullshit that's happened in the NBA for the last couple of years. The previous couple of years. Let's just let's look at it now, all right? Cover up they job like freeway, cause every hit real Tell us he's to blow me like candles on your B-Day Cause I've signed more lines than these powers full of cabins And yes, I stay high, your boy's phony It's a movie, so act like you know me I'm a lyricist to the ludicrous I'm the last of a dying breed And we almost extinct, so I'm saying I'm an MC, I move the crowd like Moses Like the Red Sea, I wear red like roses Go against me and you be dead like roses Spin at your head full of bread like Did he thought of that? I mean, I really think of that I mean, I did I Yeah, I was just saying Absolutely fucking pathetic. You can, that's unacceptable. You cannot, I dare want you to come in here with a straight face and tell me, tell me that after looking at those plays and that type of trial or whatever, that that's competition. I dare you, all right? Because that's bullshit. That's pussy. Anyone who flops, that's pussy. Anyone who gets fouled and then decides they want to argue with the ref over it instead of running back and help their team, that's pussy. If you get fouled, go back. You'll get the next one. It's that simple. But we have all these diva actions. It's, it's ridiculous. These soft ass athletes. That's what it comes down to. Because everyone thinks they're fucking important now. All right? And then we've seen this way too many times. All right? You know, we should just have a new rule. How about this? Because David Stern can clearly, he can clearly fix this all up, but he chooses not to. See, anybody who flops or whatever, tech them. Tech them. I guarantee you that I'll stop all the flops in basketball. Teams start getting tech for it. But they rather tech people for arguing with referees. So let me get this straight, NBA. The message you are sending is that you shouldn't talk back to authority, right? Even if they're right or wrong, don't talk back to authority. Stay in your place. But if you hurt the integrity of the game, that's okay. That's what you're teaching everyone. Because what you're saying is those referees, I'm sorry, but those referees, there's no way they can miss a lot of those calls unless it's done purposely or they're inexperienced. One or two, like I said. If you miss a call and say, hey, you're inexperienced, you don't know what you're doing, you shouldn't be out there in the first place. Or they are told purposely, purposely, that let certain plays go because of the flow of the game and it makes it entertaining. See, this is why people don't watch the regular season. They run away to the playoffs because it brings high drama. Emphasis on drama. That's what you're selling us, NBA. And it's sad because here in Philadelphia, you know, people are very... We're, very proud of basketball. We're a proud type of people, all right? You can go anywhere and find someone playing basketball. And I guarantee you, if you go on the court, people will be like, hey, the game is on. And you know what they say? Who cares? We're out here playing it. Because they're worried about playing it more than actually watching it. But when you watch it, you expect some type of competitive nature. It's ridiculous, all right? And speaking of Philadelphia, the Philadelphia 76ers, let's get on to it right now, all right? Philadelphia 76ers. You know, I've been getting a lot of email and a lot of comments from people saying they don't have a problem with Doug Collins, but let's get something straight, all right? Let's get something straight. The Sixers have four wins now. Anybody who saw Saturday's game against the Nets, let me tell you now. They celebrated like they won the fucking championship. Four wins! You had Doug Collins going into the stands and blowing kisses to the fans and carrying on. You've got to be kidding me. It's four wins! Four wins with the team that decides they don't want to play. Anybody who watched them all last week when they played the Heat, John Celestine said it best. He said the Heat have more talent than the Sixers do and the Sixers can't stand up to them. Okay, you want to sell that? That's fine. But here's the thing. If the Sixers aren't that talented, then why are they getting paid so damn much? Just asking.
Just asking. It doesn't make any sense. I'm not trying to hear, oh, well, they don't have any chemistry. I'm not trying to hear this team is young because Doug Collins always says it's, oh, it's a young team. They got to learn. They've been playing this game since they were little. They've been in the system. They know how organized basketball works. I'm not trying to hear this. They played in high school. They played in, in, in when they were younger. They played in college. Now they're playing on the pros. They know how this goes by now. All right? And some of those guys have been here for a long time, so you can't say that. All right. The only guy I see running out there on the court every night is Andre Iguodala. And that's not saying much because he's only running because he wants to dunk the ball. Because he sure as hell can't shoot. All right. The fact is, he's kind of, he's pretty average. But the fact is, this has been way, it's way too many times. I've been telling you what I say in the summer league. What did I tell you guys? All right. We don't have a, we don't have a, a center. And what happened? We got who? Halls? The guy puts up three points a game, and that's not what you're asking for him. But the first two minutes of every game, he usually has two fouls. He got to sit his ass down. Spates? He's a goon. He doesn't do anything. Was it Young? All last week, if anyone watched the game, he had layups. All he was doing was laying the ball up off the break, and guess what? Missing them. You can't be 6'9", or 6'8", or however tall the fuck you are, and miss those type of layups by yourself. All right? There's no one defending you. But whatever. Jody Meeks? Oh, my God. They, they, you know what? They, they had the nerve to say that um, he, wasn't, he wasn't supposed to make the roster uh, during Summer League. He was supposed to make the roster this year. And I'm thinking to myself, when I told you guys about Summer League, what did I say in my comments? Jody Meeks is balling. He's balling. Why shouldn't he have made the roster? I don't understand what he's... It's like these guys only watch one game and then say, oh, well, they say a bunch of bullshit. It's garbage. All right? If they've been watching as long as I've been watching, the rest of us have been watching, they would know by now what's up. All right? Jody Meeks deserves to start. Drew Holiday, when they beat the Nets... He had to have a game high, a career high game in order to win. He had like 20 something points and like 13 assists. All right? But he had to have that type of game in order for the Sixers to win. Do you think they can keep that up? No. They keep saying, well, you think the, the, the Sixers know how to win the fourth quarter? No. If you watch them in the fourth quarter, all they do is walk down the damn lane. When they played the Heat, they had, what, eight minutes left. They were down by eight or 12, one or two. They kept walking down the court, slowly but short. The whole quarter, there was no sense of urgency. None. Evan Turner, oh my God, you know, I try to be fair with this kid, really, seriously, Kermit the Frog is getting on my fucking nerves, all right, look, I told you guys that this kid wasn't going to be the one, all right, and it seems like that's what it is, and it seems like, like I said, I want to be so fair to this guy, but I'm sorry, I just can't, all right, I can't, because the fact is, oh my God, the fact is, this kid is not that good. He's just not. He's too nervous out there. He's so worried about what he's doing. He's making all he's making all these mistakes. He gets down. Doug Collins said that he had, every time they have a, he has a bad game, he has to talk to uh, the was the Evan Turner and tell him, you know, it it'll be okay, and that you just have to move on. And he can't get over that. He should know this by now. It's in, it's impossible to hold on to these types of things. I'm sorry, but this kid isn't doing much. One game he'll give you 14 points. The next he'll give you five. You know what I mean? And I hate to say anything on the defensive level because there's a lot of times he's been called for fouls that have not been his fault. So I'm not going to get on for that, all right? But then he gets frustrated and they got to calm him down. It's like you can't get frustrated that quick, all right? You just can't. But the fact is the Sixers do not have what it takes to run with anybody today. I'm telling you, I, at this point, I'm ready to go down there with four people I know and go down there and take their spot. I'm begging you, Doug Collins, give us an open run trial because these guys aren't getting the job done. And he's sitting around on their asses with all these fat ass paychecks and not doing anything. I'm sorry, but when you're losing by 20, I shouldn't see you on the sidelines laughing and joking. It, no, it's not that type of party. Not that type of party. All right? See, this is what I'm talking about. It's just too many guys who just think they paid, they can sit around, they got it made. You saw what just happened to that punk in New Jersey, right? He just wasn't, he wasn't playing too well, he thought he was the shit, and then he just sent them down to the D-League as a punishment. I'll put the link in the info bar for you guys to see. But the fact is, this has been happening way too much, all right? This needs to be cleaned up. Doug Collins ain't gonna last long, all right? You saw how, what, it took a couple games, just a couple more, more games, uh, was it? When they fired Eddie Jordan? So, you can expect Doug Collins to be on as well. And if he's not, I'm talking about from a front office issue, and if he's not, you can expect a lot of people saying it's unfair. I'm just saying. All right? Anyways, guys, like I said, that's it for the day. The NBA is a joke. Clean it up. All right? Because it's not about basketball anymore. It's about entertainment and dancing. Matter of fact, I'll let LeBron James take you out and just what the NBA thinks about him. You know, LeBron, LeBron is the man. He's running everything over here tonight. <laughs> it's good to be the king, huh? Yeah, I would think so. Yeah, because clearly him dancing is what is amazing about the NBA.
Anyways, I'll talk to y'all later. Y'all be safe. I'm out.